what's going on guys welcome back to another repaint video here on the channel in the video today we're going to be repainting the brand new camp cretaceous cynoceratops uh, several of you over on instagram recommended uh, and requested that i do a repaint on this guy and i was hesitant about doing it because i i have done a custom cynoceratops video um, a few years ago for tony the dino geek and i didn't want to do another video covering that same animal again but this thing is just so awesome by far mattel's best uh ceratopsian uh fancy scientific word uh, that they have made uh, this thing is huge massive chunky and it's packed full of detail just um dying to have some paint thrown on it and uh, it really just it needs a more realistic paint app and uh, that's what i'm going to do today on this bad boy so we're going to go ahead and get started and let's see what we can come up with all right guys, so before I get started uh, painting this thing, I actually want to give it a little coat of matte varnish first to bring that kind of factory glossy shiny uh, texture that it has on it. Since I'm actually not going to be priming this with my airbrush, I'm going to be hand painting the base coat on first. And uh, the only reason I'm doing that is because I don't have this particular color uh, in airbrush paint. So we're just going to do it by hand. Uh, this is Warm Buff. Uh, it's a satin acrylic paint by Apple Barrel, and uh, it is the perfect color that I had in my mind to paint this thing. So um, I have it in a cup right here, thinned down with a little bit of water to help with the flow, because you know we got to get that flow going. And I'm just going to start slapping paint on this thing, scrubbing it into all the little nooks and crannies and all the little details and stuff like that, just to make sure that I get everything evenly covered. Okay, so with that done, the base coat is dry. We're gonna go in with some transparent sand. This is from Createx, gonna be shooting this through the airbrush, and I'm not gonna be uh, painting the entire thing in the sand. I'm just gonna be uh, strategically painting uh, certain areas on it, uh, the front part of the frill, uh, back part of the legs, and the sides of the tails, and just little bits of pieces here and there. Uh, there will be a method to my madness later on uh, when you start seeing me uh, dry brush and stuff. I just want to be able to add several different color layers um, underneath uh, some of the green scales and that's what this is basically going to do so I'm going in with the uh, the transparent tan first just to kind of break some of that pattern up and uh, just to kind of make it look a little bit more interesting underneath now I'm going in with the uh, yellow ochre from Wicked Colors this is from Createx and uh, same thing focusing on the same areas where I just did the tan on the sides of the tail back of the legs and just randomly putting it on parts of the body uh, on the front of the frill and stuff like that because you know that uh, that uh, Cynoceratops has the uh, orange parts or that the real yellow ochre kind of colored parts on the front uh, front part of the uh, frill thing and uh, that's what that's going to act as uh, now I'm going to start with my first uh, green color here and this is actually just picking out the shadow areas um, around the eye socket and certain parts and the little ridges on top of the face this is just going to help um, establish shadow areas before I start uh, putting down my final green colors. So I'm starting off with my first green color and that's actually light green from Vallejo. It's the Model Air uh, brand and I'm shooting it through my airbrush. But if you don't have an airbrush, um, a, any, any sort of like olive green color would work. Uh, a real natural kind of uh, dark gritty green you want to go for. it. don't want to go too bright with it, but uh, a nice olive color green uh, would be a nice uh, green tone for this uh, dinosaur. Uh, next up here, we're going in with forest green. This is a darker color green. And um, this is going to be, again, picking out more random spots on the on the uh, figure. I Like I said, I want all kinds of different colors underneath some of these scales when I dry brush them. So this is just going to be the uh, final darker green that I go with uh, before I start dry brushing uh, all the scales and stuff and, and picking those things out. Now here I'm actually just kind of picking out the little uh, patterns that are on the, the frill just to kind of give me a general idea of what I want them to look like. I'm actually going to fix them later, uh, but I wanted to put them into place just to kind of see what they would look like. And uh, that I'm just using uh, like a little uh, light army brown and uh, some just opaque uh, Createx white just to kind of pick them out and then we'll get them a little wash later on or something. All right, so now we're going to start doing all of the dry brushing, starting off first with English Ivy. And if you can see here, um, hopefully the camera picks it up. Um, what I'm wanting to do is do a nice light dry brush uh, all over the scales with that English Ivy. And I want to make sure that I just hit the top parts of the scales and leave all the uh, 
lighter colors in between the scales untouched and I think that's going to give it a nice dimension it's going to give it a really cool looking kind of color pattern and uh, make it look a little bit more realistic so this is a very light handed dry brush uh, like you know put the paint on the brush and then wipe a majority of it off until it's almost dry and then just go to town and uh, hit it from all kinds of different angles and everything just trying to pick out those scales and um, leave everything in between them uh, untouched Uh, so now I'm going to do the horns, and I'm doing the horns with the same color that I did the first uh, base coat in, and that is Warm Buff. It's a satin acrylic paint, so it's got that nice little sheen to it. And I've got it, of course, thinned down. This is the same cup that I used at the beginning of the video, and I'm just going to go over the horns with that uh, nice Warm Buff color. It's a nice ivory kind of color, uh, and it looks good for uh, Triceratops horns or, or like just uh, dinosaur horns in general. I like to use uh, these types of off-whites for them. I um, also have the eyeball painted uh, with a uh, off antique white, and now I'm putting a black, uh, giant black pupil in there, leaving just a little bit of the white exposed. And uh, after the uh, black paint has dried, I'm actually going to go back in with another color. This one's a little bit harder to film, so I'll just kind of show you the color here. And um, this is a chestnut brown. It's a light color brown with a little bit of red red hints in it and that's going to be this tiny little brown dot inside there and then I'm going to put an even smaller black dot inside that brown dot so I couldn't film it because it was hard for me to get the camera up in there but now we're going to do the sapia fade on the bottom parts of the horns with the airbrush and if you don't have an airbrush you can just do this with a regular brush just thin that sapia down with some water almost like a wash light consistency and then you can put it on and wipe it off with your fingers and it'll kind of have the same general effect and of course, you know, it wouldn't be a uh, T-Bro repaint video if we didn't bust out Old Faithful, the uh, transparent burnt umber, uh, my favorite of all of my paints. And we're going to add that to that little horn section at the bottom. It's just going to give it a little warmth in there, and it just takes it to the next level. Yeah, it makes it look really cool. And the last few steps before we call it a day, we're going to paint the toenails with pavement gray. Yes, that rhymed. Uh, it's going to get a couple coats of Mod Podge, a couple coats of matte varnish to flatten everything out, and then I'm going to gloss up the horns, gloss up the eyes, and gloss up the beak, and this repaint will be done. So guys, I appreciate you all sticking around and watching. Remember, for more Jurassic Park-related content, you know where to find me. Links will be in the description box below. You guys take care, and I will see you in the next video.